Hi folks, this is Donald. Welcome to Venice and my most complex sketch I have ever tried. When I was looking for scenes to sketch, I came across this scene in Venice and I thought I really want to sketch that because it looks far too complicated. It's exactly the sort of scene I would have avoided in the past and that's why it's exactly the sort of scene that I want to try now because I really feel like I'm progressing so much by trying challenging sketches that require much more thought to construct and they are much more complicated and time consuming to complete. This one took about three hours in total and all I did was an ink drawing and in the end I was delighted with how it turned out so I thought I would just talk you through how it came together because in the early stages of doing this it doesn't really look like it's going to amount to much. It was only once I started packing in all the details later on, the brickwork and all the texture, because there's a lot of texture in this scene. Once all that started to go in, that was when it really came together. But before that, I wasn't entirely sure if this was going to work. The biggest challenge that I had in this scene, and it's something that's universal to pretty much all the drawings I do, is whenever there's stairs involved, and I've talked about this before, I just seem to have something amiss in my spatial awareness that I can never draw stairs properly. But this one, I just spent so long staring at the page trying to work out the curve of every line. I thought once I had the steps in place, then that gave me something to work with and it gave me a bit of confidence that I could finish this. The difficulty with this is not that it's just a sweeping staircase but it curves around to the left and try and construct that is very difficult for me. Maybe some people find it easy and that's why you're seeing a lot of turning the page. I'm turning back and forward trying to get the sweep of the curves correct, get the angles correct. Now one of the problems I did realise afterwards is that because I was continually turning the page back and forward it does make it slightly less pleasurable to view as a viewer so in future I will try to keep the page upright that's what I usually do but for this one I wanted to try turning the page to get the curves more accurate and it's easier to draw I've realised if you are just always pulling the pen towards you rather than pushing it away from you which you do have to do sometimes if the, you keep the page upright but as a viewing experience it's not as good so I will avoid that in future. Another reason I would have avoided this sort of sketch in the past is because of the amount of stuff, like all the flowers and greenery on the bridge. That sort of stuff just makes me think, oh no, too much detail, too complicated, going to take too long, I'm going to avoid that picture. And I think I got into that rut for a while where I was looking at a scene going, no, too complicated, I was overthinking it, too much detail to put in, I'll do something simpler. And what I'm finding is just by not overthinking it, just picking a scene and just going for it, I'm seeing a quite significant improvement in the level of my drawing. And I think it's because of this. It's because I'm just going for it and I'm picking scenes that are much more complicated and the complexity adds to the quality of the finished sketch, I think. And it's much more satisfying for me to draw regardless of how it turns out at the end. I find I'm much more absorbed in the activity again because I'm just losing myself in the details of drawing lots and lots of little flowers or brick detail as you'll see later on there's so much texture in the bricks of the buildings in the background and just spending the ages drawing all those bricks really helps switch off the mind and it's so it becomes a much more enjoyable experience again and then what I'm also seeing is that my drawing is improving as a result so it's like a double positive effect that my drawing is improving and I'm enjoying it much more at the same time. The railings were another example of something that I would have noticed in a scene and then chosen to avoid drawing that scene because of that. These railings are really quite complicated. You've got two curvy lines going in different directions within each railing and it makes it quite a challenge to draw. And because of the solid line way that I draw, you have to work out what's going to be in front of the thing that's behind it. When I was drawing this, I was thinking about Ian Fennelly's sketches. I'm sure you're familiar with Ian Fennelly, but if you're not, do go and look him up. He is the master of scenes like this. He just makes it look so easy and he doesn't draw anything like this in terms of solid lines. He's very kind of scribbly, scratchy. I suppose it's more like what you would think of as a sketch, whereas this is probably closer to a drawing, I guess. But what he does is very scribbly and scratchy and he loves doing scenes like this. I could just imagine his version of what this would look like. And he is also brilliant at doing watercolour. So he would be having vibrant watercolour painted all over this and the drawing 
lines that you'd be putting in would be all wild and they can be crisscrossing over each other. He doesn't have the same kind of pressure to keep all the lines solid like I try to do. I do love his style. I have tried to draw like him. I can't do it. It's just not something that clicked for me, no matter how much I tried. But then at the same time, that's a technique that he's been mastering for his whole career. He is a properly trained artist. He's just someone that I really admire in terms of what he can achieve. And sometimes you just have to accept that's not the way I want to do things. I would never be able to achieve what he does. And so I can just admire what he does without really feeling any pressure that I need to try and copy it or get to that level because I don't think I ever will. It's not really about that though. It's not competition. I have found a way of drawing that works for me and it's evolving all the time. I can see a way forward now. I can getting into a slightly evolved style of of sketching it's just it's still me but it's just slightly different and I'm really enjoying exploring that and seeing where it goes I am absolutely certain that Ian Fennelly went through that same process all the years ago when he started being an artist and then evolved into an urban sketcher and he can just knock them out now without really even thinking about it and we all have to go through that process we have to go from not having a clue what we're doing and then practice and practice until we eventually get there. So if you don't know Ian Fenley's work, do go and check it out. It's absolutely amazing. Venice is just one of those cities that seems to draw artists and sketchers in. It just feels like somewhere that has to be drawn or painted. I don't have a huge amount of knowledge about art history, but I do know that there are people like Ruskin and Whistler. There are a couple of the names that I've heard and they were creating art or writing about art in Ruskin's case since the 1800s, specifically relating to Venice. And they seem to just be obsessed with the place and more and more artists went there. At that time it was etchings rather than drawings or sketchings. But I suppose sketching is the modern day equivalent of etching. And it does make me wonder about the idea of trying that myself myself choosing one city, Venice, as a project and rather than just trying lots of random scenes, picking one place and studying it and doing lots and lots of scenes from that same city, I think that could be great fun and a great way to learn and maybe it's time for me to start learning more about art history and start reading the books by Ruskin. I think he had a very famous trilogy that he wrote as an art critic that was all about the architecture and art of the city that he loved and as far as I'm aware he was bemoaning the destruction of the city as they were in the midst of doing major renovations to the architecture and I just think that could be a really fun and interesting project to research the city and do my contribution artistically to the city in my own style not that I'm aiming to be in the upper echelons of the art world like them but just for my own benefit and I don't know whether it's something I would do on YouTube or whether I would just do it in my own time I've not really thought too much about it this is just thinking off the top of my head but it makes me also wonder whether any of you have ever done any kind of project like that I know I've been sketching the ideas you sketch on location and so most of the time you would be sketching places that are nearby your own part of the world but have you ever picked a place and really studied it art wise and done lots of drawings or paintings of that one place it seems like a really good way of getting motivation to keep drawing if you've got a project that you want to complete. It always keeps pushing you to go on to the next drawing and then the next one and then the next one. And I do have a certain pull towards Venice, even though it's not somewhere I've ever been. I do speak a bit of Italian. I used to do Italian classes and was teaching myself to learn Italian as well. When I first came up with the idea of trying to really have a go at art for the first time in my life, it was really because of a programme called Landscape Artist of the Year. It was an art competition that is on television in the UK. And in each series, the winner is given a £10,000 commission to create an artwork of a specific place. And in one of the seasons, the winning artist was given a commission of Venice in honour of John Ruskin. And so they were sent out there and they were allowed to just wander about the city doing lots of practice sketches and then eventually they decided on a final scene. And spoiler alert, I am going to tell you the winner. So if you don't want to know the result, do put your speakers on mute for a few moments. The winner was an artist called Fujiko Rose and she's an absolutely amazing artist. You should look her up. She does pen and ink drawings like I have never seen anyone do before. I can't even comprehend how someone could create art like that using just a pen. It is truly astonishing and her commissioned piece that she did inspired by Ruskin in Venice was incredible and it's made me think not so much that I want to be drawing like that because it was so far beyond any level that I would ever be able to get to but I just found it fascinating the idea idea that someone could look at something in the real world and then 
translate it onto a piece of paper in that level of detail because it was all about the detail, just ink and paper and packing as much in as she possibly could, but in a really grown up artistic way, the opposite of the way I sketch. So going back to this sketch, I loved all the textural detail on the building and putting in all the squiggly lines where the brick work is exposed and then you get to draw in some of the bricks. It's not really something I've particularly looked for in buildings, but now having drawn this one, it's really something I want to see if I can find more of is buildings with lots of texture, buildings that are run down and falling to bits because there's so much that you can draw there that's really quite appealing and it gives you loads of texture that you can build into your ink drawing. I love the contrast between the bricks where they're exposed, where all the paintwork has come off and then on the right side of the building where it has stayed on and covering the bricks and it gives you that nice two-tone effect and just the density of drawing all the bricks rather than just drawing one or two dotted about by drawing all of the bricks and spending the time to do that and believe me it did take ages it gives the building more physical solidity. And so I'm really glad I took the time to do that because it did make a difference. And as I say, I do really enjoy that aspect of drawing anyway, because you get lost in it. You can just switch off and you know that for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes, you're just going to be drawing bricks and the mind drifts to weird and wonderful places. Even turning the steps into individual bricks felt like progress because in my early days of sketching one of the things I absolutely could not figure out was the direction of the lines that I should be drawing on individual steps and it took me a while to work out that it's a perspective thing. For a while I was drawing them in completely the wrong direction and I was wondering why the steps looked like they were folding in on each other and that was because I was drawing them in the wrong direction. So once I realised that and I figured out how to do that in relation to perspective left side is pointing to the left, right side is pointing to the right, but the lines in the bottom part of each step are always upright. It took me a while to get my head around that, so I was delighted that I actually managed to work this out. Once I had the line drawing up to a stage where I thought it was complete, in the past I would have gone on to colour the whole scene, but for this one I just wanted to leave it as an ink drawing. The only thing I did was that to give the building a bit more depth, I decided to colour in the windows, turn off all the lights. This is something I always used to do and in my recent sketches I haven't been, I've just left them white, but I wanted to just give it a bit more depth. In the windows, I coloured them in black with a Faber-Castell India ink marker and I've left all the ones in the top half because they had shutters across them. And I do like the punchy darkness that that gives. Even though I didn't colour in the rest of the scene, that's somewhere I want to go now, is seeing if I can use really dark blacks for shadows and getting in more contrast in that way. And that's something I will keep exploring as my sketching evolves and hopefully improves. And it always feels like you get a little bit of an uplift when you complete a sketch and then you can look at it and say, that's turned out much better than I expected. Another little step forward in my urban sketching journey. So thanks a lot for watching and for more urban sketching inspiration like this you can click on this video right here and I will see you in the next one.